Hey YouTube, Puff and Snuff here, Ian, checking in as always from beautiful Northeast Ohio, and by beautiful, I mean gray and uh, overcast, windy, chilly, damp, rainy, drizzly Northeast Ohio, uh, which I love, and there's no sarcasm there, I absolutely love uh, this kind of weather, it is perfect pipe weather, uh, but this is not a pipe video, this is another snooze review. This is another, uh, whatever you want to call it, joint, tandem, independently collaborative review that I'm doing with Chris over at In a Pinch. Uh, and like before, uh, I will drop a link right down there to his channel where you can find his review and hopefully uh, subscribe to him as well. We've done this once before. We did this recently with uh, Lenny's Stark White, Strong White portion snooze. Uh, thought it went really well. Uh, if you watched his video and mine, we had a number of, of points of commonality where we were picking out the same stuff, but then we diverged quite a bit too in some different directions, um, which I thought was cool. That to me is exactly what this little project is about. Uh, it's about getting two different opinions to see where they, they intersect and where they don't. Uh, like before, we have not collaborated on this. We haven't discussed this. We haven't compared notes. Our communication about the snuff has been limited to uh, what product we're going to talk about and coordinating uh, upload schedules. So, uh, and then for my part, like before, I'm not consulting outside sources either. I'm not reading manufacturer's descriptions. I'm not reading other reviews that might be out there. Um, so these are my thoughts and my thoughts alone. I'm not flying completely blind. Um, I learned my lesson of of first taste tobacco reviews when I did the Fubar Bohica snuff. And I will not make that mistake again. So I've had about a half a can of this stuff already just to start to form an opinion. So with all that out of the way, on with the show. We are talking about Odin's original portion. Uh, first things first, let's talk about the can. Uh, to me, that is very attractive. Uh, I really like this can. It is not so uh, overly simple that it looks generic or bland but it's not so overly ornate that it's it's gaudy and, and kind of gross. It's just classic, but not bland. Uh, it does, and this will be hard to see uh, on the camera, but there is, see a little bit right there, there is a little tab on here. You know, snooze cans are not typically difficult to open, but that little tab, uh, that little ridge makes it even easier just to pop the lid right off of this. And of course, as most snooze cans do, it has the little convenience well down there for the uh, uh, the spent cartridges, so to speak. Um, in the can, it's a very traditional Swedish snus. Uh, there's dark fermented tobacco under there, but then you get kind of a florally citrusy note from the bergamot. Again, think Earl Grey tea if you're not familiar. Yeah, just real, real pleasant little, uh, I don't want to say ammonia, but something ammonia-like that you often get with fermented tobacco products. Um, really, it, it's what I would expect from a traditional Swedish snooze. So no real surprise yet. The pouches themselves, it's not a white portion. So as you'd expect, there's a little bit of moisture already ready to go in there, um, which to me makes it more comfortable. And of course, it will, uh, whatever nicotine's in there, whatever flavoring is in there, whatever flavor of the tobacco is in there, will present itself uh, much more quickly uh, than a white portion, which is drier and takes a little time for the saliva to start to uh, moisten that stuff up for you. So let's go ahead and uh, tuck one in. It's very comfortable sits in place nicely um, almost immediately the flavors start coming out the first thing I get uh, is salt uh, you do get the, the saltiness the brininess from um, you know what they use to adjust the pH and to kind of you know preserve uh, the tobacco and from the brining and fermenting process the tobacco and all of that stuff uh, the saltiness comes out to me first um, I don't get a real big punch of nicotine from this. 
I know from experience this past week that this is not necessarily a super light nicotine. I did have uh, I did have a, a portion on a very empty stomach, and I could kind of feel uh, a little something going on in there. But but even then, it wasn't really enough to kind of you know punch out at you. With time, as as it softens, uh, the saltiness to me fades relatively quickly. Um, and two things start to come out. One is the uh, the bergamot, obviously, and the other is also obviously the tobacco. Uh, there's not a lot to get in the way of kind of the two classic flavors that are in here. Um, to compare this briefly to the Lenny's review that I did recently, <clears throat> I find this to be more mellow in almost every respect, which is not to say mild or bland. Uh, it's just, to me, a much more relaxed snuff. The bergamot uh, is not, it's not a sharp herbal. It's not a, a very present, obvious citrus. In fact, to me, the citrus uh, from the bergamot is about the least identifiable flavor that you would expect in a traditional snooze. The bergamot, um, again with the Lenny's, I liken it to like oregano or bay leaf. It was very herbaceous and it was very strong to me. Uh, this is is more of a laid back floral um, kind of thing going on. This to me, the bergamot in this is more reminiscent of an Earl Grey tea than the last review I did. Um, and what I enjoy, um, I get plenty of pepperiness out of the, the tobacco itself. Yeah, you get that dark uh, kind of briny. Uh, this isn't so dark that it, that it gets kind of leathery or, or almost smoky. It doesn't go down that road for me. Uh, but the peppery notes do come out. The, um, Yeah, it's the brine, it's the pepper, it's that little bit of salt, it's the light, soft, mellow floral, uh, and it's really enjoyable. Now, it's been in here for, I don't have a timer, uh, but I'm going to guess two minutes, two and a half minutes. And what's already happened by this point is it's become very difficult to pick out unique flavors. It kind of stops being a, here's this, plus this, plus this, plus this. And it kind of becomes, here's a cohesive flavor um, that has salty, peppery, floral, uh, fermenty, briny uh, essences about it. But it just, it mellows and it kind of melds. And it's really good. I mean, this, this to me is a pretty laid back snuff. Sorry, snooze. Uh, a laid back snooze. And I, I intend that as a compliment, not as a criticism in that you could put a portion in your lip um, and it's not going to get in the way and you're, it, it's not going to be so strong that it's all, all you taste and it kind of absorbs all your senses. This is a good walking around snooze. Um, yeah, it, to me it's a good go-to. It's a good, good traditional in a very classic sense, uh, to me, there's nothing radical going on here. There's nothing revolutionary going on here. You're not going to get anything out of this that is probably going to change the way you think about snus. Um, but it takes a very classic formula, does it in a predictable way, and does that very, very, very well. Uh, to me, if I were, and again, I'm only going to compare this to Lenny's because that's the only other snooze I've reviewed on here. Um, if I were really, really, really in the mood for a strong, brash, ballsy snooze, I would take the Lenny's. Nine times out of ten, though, I'm looking for just a good quality snooze that does what I need it to do, provides me with the flavor that I'm looking for, um, and doesn't get in the way of the rest of everything. And, and Odin's original is very, very good for that. Um, thanks to Chris's review, who did do a little bit of outside research and talked about pricing, uh, I am aware now, thank you, Chris, that while the Lenny's positions itself as a, a uh, more inexpensive brand, because it does cost less per can, there are fewer portions in a can such that the 
while the cost per can is lower for the Lennies, the cost per portion is lower for the Odins. Um, and since I'm the kind of guy who, if I'm going to buy one of a thing, I'm going to buy 30 of a thing, um, this would be the one to have on hand for me. Um, not only from an economic standpoint, but again, I think given the choice between the two, nine times out of ten, I'm probably going to prefer the Odins. Um, I don't really know there's a whole lot more to say about this, guys. It's not, there's no one thing in here that that is just standout, amazing, great, um, you know, worth talking about over and over again, except to say it's what you'd expect. So if you want predictable, um, that does predictable in the best way possible, I, I think this is uh, this is good stuff. I'm interested in trying, uh, and I'm, I will get a hold of some of the Odin's uh, extra strong, which I understand packs one hell of a nicotine punch. Um, be interested to try that to see not only how the nicotine is different, but but how the flavors change. And we may get to a review on that one of these days. But for now, independent of anything else, I like this stuff. I'm going to call it an eight out of ten. Uh, to me, if you're if you're the kind of person who enjoys traditional snooze. This is one to have on hand. If you're someone who is very new to the world of snus, uh, this would be a very good one to try first because it's, it's to me, an excellent introduction into what snus is all about. Uh, that's it for me, guys. Questions, comments, drop them down there. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, please subscribe, uh, and, of course, check the description. Head over to Chris's channel uh, and check out what In a Pinch has to say about Odin's original portion. That's all for me, guys. Take it easy. We'll see you later.